very little military policing so far. We'll have more on their maneuvers in our continuing live reports from Jeffrey Cole on Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock. Denise? Massachusetts at a minimal cost. And, um, we're charging them basically for the driver's wages and the fuel that we'll use on the round trip going back and forth to the various destinations. Mm -hmm. And it's just a way to give back something to the community. And of course, you can count on Eyewitness News for complete coverage of Thanksgiving 1990 at Fort Meade and at Fort Devon. In other police unit begins training that may lead to an assignment in Saudi Arabia. State police. The U.S. president is visiting frontline U.S. troops. Mr. Bush is in Saudi Arabia tonight to share the encouragement he feels. He says only minor differences remain with the Soviet Union on the question of using force against Iraq. The president and Mrs. Bush will visit Army, Navy, and Marine installations on Thanksgiving Day. The Connecticut Army Reserves activated for training this week at Fort Meade are finding out now what their mission is likely to be when they get over to Saudi Arabia. Channel 3 Jeffrey Cole standing by with late details and a live report. Jeff? Well, John, they will be the soldiers who follow the prisoners of war. They will get over there with the 400th Battalion, some 600 soldiers. They'll set up a POW camp. That's what they've learned all week. They found out for sure today, at least we did, from a major that we spoke to. It was a light day of training for the 344th. They didn't work too hard, and many are looking forward to the visit of relatives tomorrow on Thanksgiving Day. You all know how it is. This is a direct order. You will do it. You don't do it. You will see me. Explain to me why you don't want to do it. They first heard the news during a morning formation. A surprise drug and alcohol test mandatory for all military police. Private Steve Barry knows the evils of drugs. He's a narcotics cop in Stanford. It's good because if you have people out there with weapons, you have to, uh, you have to maintain some sort of control. It was a light day for the 344. After yesterday's combat training, Soldiers spend much of today loading trucks, doing their laundry, and cleaning their weapons. In Vietnam, some soldiers complained of the M16 jamming in combat. Brad Miller fought there. Even now, there's concern about the, the gun jamming? Uh, they've, they've made it better over the years, uh, but there is still, if anything gets in there, sand and stuff gets in there, there's a problem. Children play with toy tanks. Soldiers do also, but they play for keeps. Here, they learn friend from foe. Most Emily um, tariffs are round, egg-shaped, like a hill top. Ours are squared with sharp armor. See the difference in the two top? Gotta have money. Ice cream. It was laid back, and the weather was warm at Fort Meade today. The ice cream truck drew nearly a platoon of soldiers. Many thought of loved ones due here tomorrow. I'd like to see my daughter again before I leave. As the soldiers prepare for their eventual deployment to Saudi Arabia, many will be given this booklet put out by the U.S. Army. It advises soldiers about some of the issues they'll face in the Arab world, particularly the importance of religion there and the role of women. But amid the relaxed atmosphere lies the stark reality of why the 344th is here. The flight to Saudi Arabia, where the U.S. and Iraq stand on the cusp of war, maybe only weeks away. We're a Desert Shield uh, unit. We have been told that we're going to deploy uh, within the near future. We anticipate the December time frame. And that's the firmest confirmation we've had so far from military official about their deployment in Saudi Arabia. One other point of interest in this uh, 400 uh, battalion that's now forming, there are some 38 volunteers, people who came here, who volunteered to serve and go on over to Saudi Arabia. Jeffrey Cole reporting live from Fort Meade. Folks, back to you. All right, we'll look for, for uh, more from you tomorrow. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Well, let's... 5th Marine Reserve Unit Company C will be training at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. They leave on Sunday. Also on Sunday, the Army National Guard 142nd Medical Company heads to Fort Devens, Massachusetts. They'll be joining the Army Reserve's 439th Quartermaster's Company Petroleum Unit, which left for Fort Devens today. Now, those 67 men and women of the unit were notified Saturday they were no longer reservists. There are no formal orders to go to the Gulf, but most are assuming this unit will eventually be part of Operation Desert Shield. The of the 25th Regiment Marines will officially be activated beginning tomorrow. More than 100 members of the infantry company reported to the Plainville headquarters today to begin processing ID cards and other forms.
You might uh, equate this to uh, what you would identify as maneuvers more than you would uh, just to try and identify a standard operating procedure. Go out and you, uh, you fight against another force with plank rounds. It's good practice as far as uh, coordinating your maneuver. That report tomorrow morning around 8 o'clock in the morning, and uh, we'll go through our mobilization stations once again. And uh, for the remainder of Sunday and Monday, we'll uh, conduct training, tie up loose ends, and we'll actually leave the reserve center here sometime early Tuesday morning. The unit will fly out to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, for training. It's not known how long the unit will train there or whether they'll be called to the Persian Gulf. The Marines from Plainville are the fourth company from Connecticut to be called up. Their activation took place as a medical unit from New Haven prepared to leave the state. Channel 3 Steve Gerald has the story. The 142nd Medical Clearing Company leaves in less than 24 hours. And many soldiers pose for what will become cherished photos with their families. I'm bringing every photo I can possibly bring. So right now, uh, take anything that reminds me of my good family. Wow, well, he's my whole life, you know, so, you know, I'll miss him. I want him, you know, just a picture, just to, so I can see his face in the morning when I wake up. The 142nd is a medical unit that transports casualties from the battlefield. Today, the unit was told it will report to Saudi Arabia. You've given them up when you probably could have used them at home. And now, another ultimate test. You know, I would rather know now than later that I was going over there. It gives me more time to prepare mentally, physically. Governor William O'Neill walked table to table to wish the soldiers and their families well. I've been in this armory many a time for many dances and balls and drills but never that meant so much as today. When the 142nd leaves tomorrow, there will be three companies of soldiers from Connecticut who have left behind everyday lives to join Operation Desert Shield. And a fourth company of Marine Reserves is getting ready to go. If you're leaving your job, friends, everybody, it's just hard all over. And until now, it hasn't really sunk in. Sorrowful goodbyes and dangerous duty lie ahead. The 142nd decided this was a better way to spend the last day here. Steve Gerald, Channel 3 Eyewitness News, New Haven. Iraqi President Saddam Hussein is promising to free more Westerners. Iraqi television says Hussein will release relatives of 10 British women who visited him recently. And he says he's agreed to free a number of Italians after Italy sent a plane load of medical supplies to Iraq. Secretary of State James Baker continues his travels on behalf of a U.N. resolution that would authorize the use of force against Iraq. He met with top officials in Colombia today, but didn't get an answer on whether they'd support such a resolution. He moved. Garland is going up, and people's thoughts are of peace and goodwill. Many are hoping that's what Iraq and the United States have in mind, too. I certainly would rather sit down at the table and talk than go to war. I think it's always better to talk than to just go ahead and, um, you know, increase the conflict. Despite the planned diplomacy, the U.S. continues to build up its troops in the Mideast. The deployment designed to make Saddam Hussein think twice is also making some people nervous here at home. Unfortunately, right now, it seems as if the administration really would like a war. The military police unit from New Haven will become the first Connecticut unit to be deployed to Saudi Arabia. The 344th MP Company, part of the Army Reserve, has been in training, as you know, at Fort Meade, Maryland, but it will fly to the Middle East on Friday. Now, their main job would be to escort enemy prisoners. Action News will be with them as they get ready to depart, and we'll have live reports from Fort Meade beginning tomorrow. A Northwest Air... The Persian Gulf. A West Hartford... Connecticut soldiers at Fort Meade, Maryland, prepare to head to the Gulf. Good evening. We'll have complete coverage of the Gulf developments of today in just a moment. But first, a local story about a call from the Iraqi Foreign Affairs Ministry to the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. Saddam Hussein says he is willing to release the hostages because he no longer needs them to deter a U.S. attack. Now that all of his troops are deployed in the Gulf, but there's no word yet on exactly when the hostages will be released. While hostages are anxious to move out of the Gulf, some Connecticut soldiers are getting ready to move in. Action News reporter Alan Lagarde is standing by live at Fort Meade, Maryland, where the 344th Military Police Company is preparing to ship out. Alan? Alan and the people here know they will be the first Connecticut unit to ship out for the Persian Gulf. 
That will probably happen on Sunday. So the possibility of a peaceful solution certainly makes things easier on soldiers here, some of whom have a little more adjusting to do. People are still can't believe that we're here and we were activated and uh, we're still pinching ourselves. And as soon as we see the airplanes and are, are walking on them, uh, I think people are going to really, it's like a slap in the face. But today's news about the hostages means that slap won't be as painful. The soldiers are obviously loose and ready. The talk of a peaceful solution has taken some of the edge off their trip to the Persian Gulf. The shadow that was looming over us a few weeks ago, as far as the threat of a conflict, is, has lessened a little bit. So, as far as this shadow goes, there is a silver lining. While the tension is down, these men and women know they are still going to Saudi Arabia, probably on Sunday. That's a positive sign, uh, but nonetheless, I don't think that's going to affect our job or are deploying over there. Uh, we still have to be re ready regardless. That's why the training continues. This drill is practice for clearing an urban area. It includes work with chemical masks, a reminder that the situation is still serious. But after three weeks at Fort Meade, the commanding officer says his soldiers are well prepared. You've got no doubt that they're all ready. I have no doubt at all. I'll tell you right now, the mood has certainly changed. Two weeks ago when I was here, it was a lot more tense than it has been from what we've seen today. Right now, I'm not sure how much you can hear. Members of the 344th are about 100 feet behind me. They're singing, you've lost that loving feeling, an old Righteous Brothers tune. They've really relaxed a lot more in the two weeks that we've been here. And as uh, you could hear from their commanding officer, he says they're ready to go to Saudi Arabia and do whatever their mission calls for. Right now, this is Alan Lagarde reporting live from Fort Meade, Maryland. Back to you, Alan Ann. So, Alan, they'll be heading out on Sunday, you say? That's the unofficial word. Earlier it had been said that they were going to be leaving tomorrow. Apparently there were some problems getting a plane for them, some of the transportation problems, and it does appear now, although it's unofficial, that they will be leaving on Sunday. Okay, Alan. Thanks very much. Alan Lagarde on the Action Cam live at Fort Meade, Maryland. The president's troop call-up has claimed another group of local men and women. Early this morning, the third truck platoon of the Marine Reserve ship clock on Sunday to catch a plane at Andrews Air Force Base. That plane is going to be taking them to the Persian Gulf. Now, the three weeks here at Fort Meade have been tough on some of these people. If there's one thing all the soldiers agree on, is that the mail from home has made all this a lot easier to handle. <laughs> these are voices from home, a tape from the Holmes Elementary School in New Britain. The voices mean a lot to the soldiers. So do letters coming from school children. I'm real happy, you know, it's all. The kids are thinking about us. Packages from home are even more important. No, Lieutenant James Scully showed us what he got in the mail just yesterday. This traveled 450 miles in the package. We got here intact. After I unpacked it, I was repacking it. I stepped on it. Most of the other items arrived intact, including one that will come in handy on New Year's Eve. <laughs> the stuff in the mail, how important is it to you? Probably the most important thing we have going here. That's one reason everyone likes this man. Joe Costello is the unit's administrative clerk. That means he's the postman and Santa Claus all rolled into one. He picks up the mail about five times a day. And how much does that mean to him? A lot. It's almost everything. <laughs> well, we're down here, we're by ourselves. And uh, it's good to get letters from home. Now, they still don't have an address for in Saudi Arabia. In fact, they don't know exactly where they're going to be. They haven't been told that even. But when they do get an address, they want us to get the word back to the people at home because they're counting on lots of mail to help them through their time in the desert. This is Alan Lagarde reporting live from Fort Meade, Maryland. Back to you, Alan Ann. Alan, you've made a couple of trips to Fort Meade, Maryland. How has the morale there changed, or is it the same as it was about three weeks ago among the when they first got here, When they first got here about three weeks ago, they were a lot more tense than they seem to be. And I guess you can see a few people here right now. Some of the families have made another trip down to see them because tonight's the last night they really have to themselves. So some of the families are making visits. The people here are now ready for this job. They've been actually a little bit more anxious, it seems, to get their job over with. You can see, I guess some of them are now talking to us. But uh, they seem a lot more relaxed, and they're really just trying to get things, things done and, and get their job over with. All right, Alan, thank you. Uh, wave back at him for us. Right. And we appreciate it. Alan Lagarde reporting live from Fort Meade. And uh, there's another group of Connecticut soldiers encamped at Fort Devens near Boston. But it's still not clear when they might go to the Gulf. It's the 142nd Medical Company of the Connecticut National Guard from New Haven. And today, they were visited by the state's top guard member. Action News reporter John Crane has that story. Uh, the people of Connecticut, I think you really aware of what you've done. Major General John Goreski came to boost morale. Sir. Yes, sir. How are you? And to get a first-hand look at the 142nd's preps for Gulf duty. He found these now former civilians starting to think like soldiers. 
This is all the soldier's common task, how to aim and fire your rifle. Uh, this is part of the how do we zero our rifle. A lot has changed for the 142nd Medical Company since it arrived here at Fort Devens three weeks ago. Changes in terms of attitude. When they got here, they were filled with concerns about what was happening at home. Now, they're more concerned about what they face in Saudi Arabia, and they're ready. We're going to Saudi. And that's it, and that's where our mindsets are right now. They're starting to calm down now. You know, finally, uh, I don't know, just getting a more calm look at it now. The general is satisfied, even impressed. You see the fact that uh, they've really uh, made the transition from civilian life uh, into military in a very short period of time. Uh, it is uh, startling that they can go ahead and do it that quickly. Why not? They're not the guard anymore. It's the army now. They'll have to be ready. Their lives may depend on it. John Crane, Action News 8, Fort Devon. And John tells us the 142nd is in for another morale boost on Saturday, a week from tomorrow, December 15th. They've been invited over to Foxborough to watch the Patriots play the Redskins. The Pats are donating the tickets. In Connecticut, concern is growing over the possibility of war in the Gulf. All over the state today, vigils were held. This one outside Senator Christopher Dodd's office, showing support for continuing sanctions and reaching a diplomatic solution to the Gulf crisis. Some protesters brought letters expressing their opposition to war, which will be delivered to members of Congress. And now an update on the case against the West Hartford daycare operator. It seems to be growing tonight. Health officials and police are saying they've received dozens of calls from parents and from former students of Hildegard's daycare center. This following administrative charges being leveled against the daycare operator, chi charges of child abuse. As Action News reporter Ellen Abrams tells us, though, tracking it all down is no easy task. Hildegard Kralitz, loving daycare operator or child abuser. Many parents are wondering tonight, but there's no doubt about the health department phone line. Okay, well, we appreciate the information, and we will certainly follow up on it. Since Kralitz was charged and her center closed, the health department has been swamped with calls, many complaints about other centers. The Hildegard story has increased the workload, which last year stood at 200 complaint calls. That's Greater Hartford alone. That yesterday, I know, we spoke with someone else about Hildegard, and there had been complaints, but nothing you could nail down. That's right. What do you do in that situation? I mean, how many other Hildegards are there out there? I wouldn't know. We do what we can do with the information that we have. When we take all the information, you know, who's making the complaint, they have the option of being remaining anonymous, what was done, who it was done with, when it was done, and then if the violations were substantiated. Do you think there, there'll be more because of what's happened? Or? I think when something like this happens, I think it, it tends to make parents take a closer look. Look at this. All of these file cabinets are for daycare centers in the greater Hartford region. And inside, there's information on each daycare center, everything from licensing to inspections to complaints. It's not often a center's license is revoked. The last time it happened was after a Bloomfield toddler was found dead inside her daycare operator's car. She'd suffocated. Colombo goes to college Sunday. Coming up next on Action News, the last chance to relax for Connecticut troops at Fort Meade, Maryland, before they head to the Gulf tomorrow. Connecticut troops at Westover Air Force Base in Massachusetts got some help with legal matters. The Toys for Tots campaign gets a helping hand from some Connecticut reservists. And we'll visit Santa all the way in the North Pole. I'm Merle Perkins. And I'm John Crane. Action News is next. Now, at Crabtree Hats Cadillac Oldsmobile Mitsubishi, the all-new used car clearance center. Buy these at one low price, $49.95, just $89 a month. On 1988 Mitsubishi Mirage. On 1984 Mercury Capri 5.0. On 1986 Ford Escort L. Your choice, same price, $49.95, only $89 a month. Only at the Crabtree Hats Used Car Clearance Center. Take exit 13, one half mile south off Route 8, Shelton. For going in style. If you are playing to win. Or just for fun. A night on the town. Or for staying one step ahead of the game. It's backers, making you feel as good as you look. WTNH Channel 8. Live from Connecticut's news station, 
This is Action News Weekend with John Crane, Merle Purvis, Dr. Mel with weather, and Ken Strayhorn on sports. Good evening. Leading the news tonight, the countdown to the Gulf. Tomorrow, Connecticut's 344th MP Company will start the long journey to Saudi Arabia. Action News reporter Alan Lagarde is live at Fort Meade, Maryland, with a report on this final day in the United States. Alan? John and Merle, it was 23 days ago that the 344th Military Police Company was activated. And in that time, I've gotten to know quite a few of these people fairly well. I can tell you, tonight you can actually feel the emotion starting to change. It's been building up and growing all week. And if emotions had a voice a couple of days ago, it would have been a whisper. In the past few hours, it has begun to scream, this is it. The fact that these people are going to the Persian Gulf is actually starting to hit home. There was no stadium, no announcers, and the game wasn't against Navy. But the Army still played football today. For Connecticut soldiers at Fort Meade, the game helped pass the time. There's nothing left to do. They just have to wait until their plane leaves for Saudi Arabia. The reality is starting to sink in. Most of us, we've been so busy since we've been here that uh, we really haven't had a whole lot of chance to think about everything that's happened in the last month. And I think that getting on the plane is going to be when it hits a lot of people. I know that's when it's going to hit me. That's when I'm going to know for sure I'm going. When these people joined the reserves, they never thought they'd be activated. And now, the day before they travel halfway around the world, most don't really know what lies ahead. There's nothing like this happened to me before, so it's totally new. So you don't know what to expect? No, not really. I hope it's good. <laughs> What am I expecting? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Until I get there, I'll know. But they do know their lives will change again tomorrow. It hasn't hit me yet, but it will when we get on the bird. When that time comes, then it will hit me. And, like, I'll miss my family and stuff like that. I'll probably break down and cry. You know? <laughs> Persian Gulf are poised and ready tonight at Fort Meade, Maryland. Action News reporter Alan Lagarde has been re following the stories in the last moments tonight. Here is a report. The man nodding his head is Captain Anthony Serrano, commanding officer of the 344th. Most of the people in his unit are young and have never seen combat. He has, but it's a blend of understanding and experience that brings him respect. I learned this all years ago. Oh, my guys sure. are still kids. I'm little, little. Excuse us. Oh, I can't help it if I'm not old, sir. I can't help it if I am. <laughs> he spent much of the day in groups like this, keeping the troops loose, but he has made sure things stay in the right perspective. They believe it's serious now. And we want them to think it's serious, not think, know it's serious, because this isn't a game anymore. The idea that not everyone will return is something no leader likes to discuss. Serrano is no different, but it is a fact of life. The risk is there. Well, let's be real about it. It's, there's the possibility that it could be just a regular old traffic accident. There's a certain amount of danger, whether, you, whether it's going to, a, going to be a real war or just a training exercise. You still have that danger. The possibility somebody gets hurt, somebody gets killed. I don't want that. And he doesn't expect it. Before the unit left New Haven, the captain told his troops, if you listen to me, I'll bring you back. He believes it. You see, in five and a half months, you guys can give us a good parade when we come home. Alan Lagarde, Action News 8, in Fort Meade, Maryland. And what will those Connecticut troops face when they go over there in terms of the state of tensions? It's still anyone's guess. Today, Saddam Hussein proposed his foreign minister should meet with President Bush December 17th to be followed by a meeting between himself and Secretary of State James Baker on January 12th. Now, that's just three days before the deadline for Iraq to get out of Kuwait, and so the U.S. is saying, forget it. One of his tactics may be to try to divide the coalition, uh, to divide the American people, the Congress and the President, by taking some partial steps or by trying to drag out negotiations with a hint that, uh, that just around the corner is a settlement. Needless to say, the administration is sticking with its plan, calling for Saddam and for Baker to meet sometime late this month or early in January. There's confidence and camaraderie. Families are saying their goodbyes. It's a good way to, to, to get sent off. You know, the last, last couple days being with the family, just getting away from it all really means a lot. Tonight, amid the lights of taxi cabs, soldiers and their loved ones bid farewell. They dream of a joyous reunion. They dread that this could be the first to go. 
Good evening. In less than four hours, the 344th Military Police Company is scheduled to be on a military transport heading east. Their ultimate destination is Saudi Arabia. Action News reporter Alan Lagarde is with the 344th at Fort Meade, Maryland tonight, where he's standing by with the latest. Alan. Well, John and Merle, it certainly is getting close. In about an hour from now, these people that you see all around us, people we've been covering for the past 24 days, will be heading on to buses and going out to Andrews Air Force Base. There they're going to board a 747 that's going to land them in Saudi Arabia within the next couple days. It's all getting very real at this point. It's almost time to go. The last order of business was loading the truck. From there, it was time to wait. The mood decidedly different than it has been. Somber. There was plenty of time for reflection, a chance to write that last letter to her girlfriend, and time to wonder. I personally don't have any doubts, but you never know what situation will arise. And you can train for everything, but the variables that exist and human nature. But human nature also takes a toll on the mind. The mission has never been so close. The last goodbyes are merely memories, and what lies ahead is an airplane ride to a strange land and the unknown. I don't like flying in the first place. <laughs> I'm going to be nervous, you know, going to a foreign country, someplace you know, I never, never really heard of until this thing happened with Iraq. It's going to be tough. I, I, just thinking about home. I've, I've never been overseas myself, and uh, it's going to be my first Christmas away. It's going to be hard. Joining me now live is Captain Anthony Serrano. He is the commanding officer of the 344. Thanks for being with us, Captain. I want to start off, do you have any doubts at all? Are your people definitely ready for this mission going on? Yeah, my people are ready. They train real hard. They're very enthusiastic. Their morale is high, and they can do the job. Yeah! yeah. 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 <laughs> Captain, when they arrive in Saudi Arabia in the next couple of days, what should these people be expecting? Well, the only thing I know right now is when we get on the ground, we're going to rest for about 24 hours, and then the mission will come down through a warning order. And uh, at that point, I just don't know what to expect. Uh, now, we've been talking with a lot of these people all day. I've been asking them what they've been thinking about. As you're going to be leading them over to Saudi Arabia, what are you thinking about right now, Captain? Well, the only thing I'm thinking about is getting over there, doing the job, and bringing them all home. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much, Captain. It's Randall, commanding officer from the 344th. We'll be out at the airport when the plane takes off later tonight, and we'll have that for you live at 11 o'clock. Now, this is Alan Lagarde reporting live from Fort Meade, Maryland. Back to you, John and Merle. Gung-ho group, Alan. Wish them our best, will you please? Thank you. Alan Lagarde down at Fort Meade. Merle? A West Haven. American soldiers are on their way to Saudi Arabia at this hour. Good evening. Leading the news tonight, the preparations are all over. The first group of Connecticut reservists assigned Gulf duty is now on its way. Action News reporter Alan Lagarde is live at Andrews Air Force Base when the 344th left from tonight. Merle and John, three and a half weeks ago, the 344th Military Police Company became the first Connecticut Reserve unit to be activated for Operation Desert Shield. Tonight, the 344th became the first Connecticut unit to leave for the Persian Gulf. Now, a lot has happened to these men and women in the past few weeks, but the real adventure is just beginning. And as they fly towards Saudi Arabia tonight, I can assure you, friends and family are on their minds. Now, you'll be able to see that as we show you the 344th final hours on American soil. Okay, guys, this is it. Graduation. You all passed. And for just for graduation, you get a free trip, all its big pay, to Saudi Arabia. We're going to get the chaplain up here before we leave. It's only fair that uh, given the mission that's before us, we ask God's blessing on us as we travel there and as we do that mission. So I want to ask you just briefly, please, to take off your hats and bow your heads with me as we ask God's blessing on our trip together. So go with us and bless us and keep us safe. And while we're away, oh Lord, we pray your blessing upon our family members that we'll be leaving behind. Love you, Tara. Some lieutenant colonel from uh, from the base here just gave us 
boxes and boxes of cookies and some Christmas cards and calendars and everything. Oh, they're having a blast. Oh, 